Computers, clothes, even cuddly toys. Almost everything we buy gets here in a container. Over the next year, we'll follow this box around the world. You can track it online at bbc.co.uk forward slash the box or see it here on BBC News. Have you ever seen inside one? Uh, up there is the uh, little GPS. In fact, 90% of all the goods we buy in the shops arrive in containers like these. This is the box that we are going to be following during the course of this year as it makes its journey on the high seas all around the world. Quite an elaborate operation. Why on earth are we doing it? Because very simply, these boxes have changed the world. What we wanted to do was tell the story of the global economy in a new and exciting way. In some ways, the economy can be quite intangible, balance of payments, uh, exchange rates. This was an idea that people could latch onto, that they could see and feel and touch. And what's really fascinating about the shipping container, the humble shipping container, is it's been central to the growth of globalisation and international trade. And this was an idea that worked really well for multi-platform audiences. You could use it online, you can listen on the radio, you can watch it on television, and our audiences have really enjoyed the experience. First stop, a Scotch whisky bottling plant in Paisley. Here, a consignment of 15,000 bottles is being prepared for the Chinese market. Even in these uncertain times for most leading economies, export sales are booming. And as the cases of Scotch are lifted into the box, it's worth reflecting this is a good news story for the British economy, which needs export growth to take up the slack after the downturn in other sectors. Then it's on to the port of Greenock on the Clyde, and the box awaits its turn for loading onto the ship. The site that people were directed to off the back of broadcasts had um, all, the, all the elements that people would expect, so they could find out what was going on, the background to the project, the news stories that had been written off the back of it, extra video that we'd recorded, also displaying any of the user-generated content that we might get as part of it. But the key challenge, really at the centrepiece of the project in online terms, was the map where people could find out where the box was and where it had been over the course of its journey. The box is just one part of the world container trade story. Now it's en route for Shanghai with its whisky. It'll carry many other cargoes to many other destinations before the year-long project is over. NYK leapt at the opportunity to be involved in this exciting project. The container, the humble box, has brought uh, trade on an unprecedented scale uh, and through this project we hope we can, we can bring that to life uh, to the general public. Through the mediums of, of web, radio and TV we see we can illustrate the issues, the scale and the complexity of this industry and hopefully in a format that people can read and easily understand. All the way from Greenock in Scotland via Southampton, the Suez Canal in Singapore the BBC box is now here, inside 15,000 bottles of whisky, and they'll soon be heading for the bars of Shanghai. We were surprised, pleasantly surprised at the scale of it. Fairly early on, it was obvious it was being picked up by a lot of blogs and forums, both sort of specialist transport ones, but also more general ones where people were sort of saying, hey, have you seen what the BBC is doing? What a great idea. Um, then we started getting pictures being sent in. The first leg of the box's journey took it from Southampton up to Scotland, uh, mainly by rail, but also by truck. And obviously after it left Scotland by sea. So we, re we reacted to that by setting up um, a Flickr group on the, that's the photo sharing website Flickr, where people could post their own pictures, but where we also intended to post the best of the pictures that readers had sent into us. A tribute group was set up on Facebook, I'm following the BBC box, which took us aback and pretty quickly got more than 100 members and is still growing. Then it even grew beyond that. We had uh, some sort of enthusiast, um, uh, apparently a shipping enthusiast, who set up a dedicated website called uh, followthecontainer.com where he fed off what we were doing but added extra content to it, his own videos, videos he found on YouTube around containerization. In a way, a classic example of a great story being picked up and the audience imagination feeding into it and producing content elsewhere and sort of developing the story into a much, much bigger phenomenon than we thought it would be. I've always been interested in 
uh, containers, shipping, everything to do with, with the sea. Uh, and I, when I saw the BBC start this, this project with the, the container on the web page, I thought, here's, here's a wonderful opportunity to, uh, to get involved. And I thought it would be so easy to create a model of the box um, that I could offer to the BBC. Um, they could put on the web page. People could download it and make their own version of the box. When the world stops spending, it's here that feels it first. Shanghai's port is one of the biggest on the planet, sending goods to the world and taking a few in itself. Since the project launched, we've seen dramatic changes in the global economy and the box has been an incredible device to enable us to tell some of those stories. For instance, in Scotland, we've been able to tell the story of uh, exporters benefiting massively from a weak pound sterling. Uh, we've been able to tell the story on the spot in China, in Shanghai, of what's been happening with dramatically falling shipping prices. We're going to be going to where this global financial crisis started and telling that story. And what's really heartened me is that schools and geography teachers and all sorts of audiences have latched onto this project as a way to understand what's happening in the global economy. Now at this end of the assembly line, they're boxing up the finished product, ready for the first stage of its journey by road from here in Ningbo to Shanghai, where in a warehouse, the BBC box is waiting, ready to ship these tapes from China to the United States. <laughs> 